Hi there, friends. Will Davis Jr. here with 48 to be conversations about the Old Testament. I appreciate you joining in. This is lesson number 39. Getting there, talking to you about the prophet Ezekiel today. Please send your comments, questions, complaints to me, senior pastor, srpastor at acfellowship.org. I appreciate the feedback and the encouragement and the comments, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I introduced you yesterday to Jeremiah, a 6th century and 5th century BC prophet. Today I introduced you to uh, another prophet from the similar time period, and his name is Ezekiel. As you know, Ezekiel carries a major work in the Old Testament, and it's a, like Jeremiah, a pretty tough read, but a good read, one worth reading. Ezekiel, um, we know only about him what we know from the biblical book that bears his name. We know that not long after he was married, um, the Lord said, your wife's going to die because you're going to be able to communicate to Israel, to Judah, how I feel about losing my, my bride, the nation of Judah, to idolatry and sin and thus exile. And she, in fact, did die. Ezekiel has the most symbolism of a prophet where he would build a siege works and, and act like he's laying siege against her, do things with his body and pantomime or lose his wife so much of which was symbolic in his life. He's the most symbolic prophet we have where things are happening, and he's saying, because this happened to me, this is what the message is. A lot of that in, in the book. He ministered, the book opens, chapter 1, with him by the river C-H-E-B-A-R, Kebar, which is now modern-day Syria. It would have been in Babylon. He would, he would have been deported in about 593, the first time the Assyrians laid siege, uh, or the, excuse me, the Babylonians laid siege to Jerusalem. They backed off, but they took a bunch of people with them in the initial exile, and they came back in 586 and wiped out Jerusalem. Ezekiel was deported in that first exile to Babylon. So he wakes up by the river Kabar, and while he's there one day, far away from home, this is so amazing, he has a vision of God. Actually, he has a vision of Jesus. You can read it in chapter 1. With that vision also comes a calling, like very much like what Jeremiah had, a very strong, determined, I'm setting you apart for this work. I have a message for you. But curiously, Ezekiel's message is to the exiles. He talks to the nations of Judah and Israel both in his book. But it's from the standpoint of you're no longer having the home field advantage. Boy, what a word. You're no longer in charge. So here's my message to those of you who are in exile. And it's a, quite a prophecy. He continues to recount so they don't ever forget the sins that cost Israel in the north and Judah in the south their freedoms led to the destruction of Samaria and Jerusalem, respectively, because one of these days they're going to be restored, and he didn't want this to happen again. So Ezekiel continues to play out the, what he calls the infidelity of Judah as a bride of God and how she slept with her multiple lovers, he says, meaning other gods, um, in broad daylight and brought this sin upon herself. It's really a strong, strong read, and... A great read for today. All right, themes of the book of Ezekiel. I'll start with first what I call the importance of calling. And this is very much what Jeremiah had. Um, I can relate to this only on a minuscule scale because I've not faced what they have faced. But sometimes when you're, when you're walking out your life and it's really, really hard, knowing you're in the will of God is really important because sometimes you have to keep putting your face in the middle of Jeremiah was told, I'll make your face like flint. It won't matter what comes at you. Well, Ezekiel needed the same call because Ezekiel was going to live his life in, in exile and lose his wife. But he had to be a prophet to the people in exile. So calling matters. So when you're walking out the difficult days, you want to make sure you're right smack in the middle of where God wants you to be. Or it's awfully hard to stay in the game otherwise. Calling matters. Secondly, he continues to speak to the uniqueness and the power of God. Remember, these guys are exiled to a foreign land that worshipped everything under the sun, literally. And juxtaposed to the polytheism of the people in Babylon, there is the monotheism, one God, of Israel. And so Ezekiel continues to call out the uniqueness and the holiness and the, the strength and the power and the um, untouchability and immutability, the unchanging nature of their God. So strong themes of the Lord God who made the heavens and the earth. The same thing in Jeremiah. The Lord God who made everything. He will never pass away. And now that you're in exile, you have to know this. Now that you're in exile, seeing all these other fake, fault gods and not false gods and idols, you have to know God is the real God. Big, big theme in Ezekiel. 
I love this next one. Another theme here is that even though you're in exile, you're never exiled from God. Um, they were they wake up in a foreign land and yet God made sure a prophet went with them. And prophets aren't exempt from exile. God needed people to God needed pe prophets to speak to his people in exile. Jeremiah said in chapter 29, build houses, pray for the prosperity of your city. Well, he did the same thing through Ezekiel. Ezekiel was on the shores of the very banks of the river with them, 700 miles from home in exile. And God spoke to the exiles there and said, I'm still your God. And I still have a dream for you. So just because you're in exile, just because you're somewhere where you don't want to be, doesn't mean God isn't there with you and can't speak to you and can't still be your God there. God is not exiled, no matter where you are. Final theme is the role of the Spirit. This is something Jeremiah introduced and I talked about in the chapters 31, 32, 33 of Jeremiah, the, the Spirit Covenant. Well, Ezekiel does the same thing, and he prophesies in chapter 37, which is one of the most amazing prophecies in all the Bible, shows Ezekiel a valley of dry bones and says, Ezekiel, and it represents the dead nation of Israel and of Judah. And he said, can these bones live? And Ezekiel says, you know, I don't know. And he says, speak to the wind. Speak to the, um, the, new, the pneuma, the rhema, not the rhema of God, the ruah of God, the Hebrew word wind. Rhema, ruah of God, speak to the wind and see if these bones will live. And they rattle and they shake and they come together and he speaks again and prophesies and they're, they're, they come to life and get breath in their lungs. And it's a prophecy of the return of the nation of Israel under one leadership, no, no longer divided, one leadership, after the exile, and it was set up the return of Christ, the, invention, the coming of Christ into the nation of Israel in his lifetime. It's an amazing prophecy. I'll read Ezekiel 37. So, and that same chapter then talks about the stick of Judah and the stick of Israel becoming one. He says, take two sticks, right, Judah, right, Israel, and then put them together and say, we got one nation now. That's what the Spirit does. So Ezekiel prophesies hard about the role of the Holy Spirit in the restoration of Israel and the role of Israel, the Holy Spirit in our lives moving forward. It's a great book. It's a hard read. I'm not going to lie to you. Ezekiel, like Jeremiah, is hard. There's some tough stuff in there. But God has words for us, even in, even in exile. So it's worth reading. Tomorrow, Daniel, who is also a prophet of exile. The great story of Daniel living in Babylon and how God used him there. That's tomorrow. Lord, thanks for this time. Thanks for my viewers. Help us to live with the kind of fire that Ezekiel had. Help us to know the role of the Spirit in our lives. Thank you for speaking to us, even in exile. Amen. See you guys soon.